to build the ultimate backyard rocket. <laughs> Bell ringing with a coat hanger. And trapped in a rope tangle. A compass to point you in the right direction when you're tracking down stolen goods. Better still, how to make dirty water squeaky clean. And how to cheat gravity. <laughs> Sounds impossible to me. But it won't after we've let you in on some very clever backyard science secrets. Speaking of which, I know one backyard where keeping secrets is about to go very wrong indeed. You can't beat hanging out with your best friend and sharing secrets. Ty and I tell each other everything. It's all contained in my secret diary. I keep it locked up and safe from prying eyes. <laughs> Speaking of prying eyes, that's Daniela. She's always hanging around and getting in our way. Good riddance. Now we can enjoy ourselves. Oh no! That tower is all our deepest secret! We've got to find it! What's this? A message from Daniela. That's a tree, and I bet the N means north. The S and W must mean south and west. The numbers must mean distances. It's like a treasure map. If we could only work out which direction is which, then we can get my diary back. We're going to need a compass. Migrating birds use natural compasses to fly from one end of the earth and back again each year. Some birds take their bearings from the sun. Others find their way by using tiny grains of magnetic material near their brain, which sense the earth's magnetic field just like a compass. Everyone knows when it comes to food, boys are bigger pigs than girls, right? Well, here's a race that will settle it once and for all. Blake the Bolter versus Margot the Muncher. Who can eat the most dry cereal in a minute? Okay, eaters. Males at the ready. Get set. And they're off. Blake's hoeing into it. Margot's pacing herself. I wonder who's going to end up the cereal chomping champion. What a mess! Someone's been playing with the salt and pepper and they've mixed it all up together. Looks like the work of my kid brother. Mum will be furious if she sees this mess. I'll be here forever trying to separate it out. I need something that'll help me get out of hot water. Uh, mm, I know. I'll need a plastic spoon and a woolen cloth. Give it a good rub. Now, when I hold it above the salt and pepper, watch what happens. The pepper jumps up. When you rub a plastic spoon on the woolen cloth, some of the negatively charged electrons in the cloth jump onto the spoon. The spoon gets a negative charge. The positively charged pepper is attracted to the negatively charged spoon. The pepper comes up first because it's lighter. Hey presto, all that pepper in one pile. Just one problem. <laughs> I went in all directions. I think that's what's going to happen to Sophie and Ty too if they don't get their bearings on that missing diary pretty soon. I'm a genius. I've just remembered a way to make a compass. Draw a circle on a piece of paper. Mark the compass points north, south, east and west. Pour some water into a bowl on top of the compass. 
Next, take a needle and wrap it across the magnet lots of times. Push the needle through a small piece of cork and pop it in the water. And look what happens! The tip of the needle moves around until it points to the magnetic north. Stroking the needle on the magnet turns the needle itself into a magnet. Because the needle is then magnetised, it will behave like any other magnet does. The Earth is one big magnet. Its magnetic field is so large that we're always in it, which is why a compass always points north. If I turn the piece of paper till the north arrow lines up with the point of the needle, my compass is ready. The sooner we get hold of that diary, the safer our secrets will be. Whales, too, spend the year navigating across thousands of kilometres of ocean. Some whales navigate by making sounds that bounce off underwater landmarks. They build up a map inside their brains that helps them stop running aground. Like migrating birds, many whales also find their way using an inbuilt compass in their brains that senses the Earth's magnetic field and keeps them on course. Day, I'd love a drink. Ooh, it's too dirty. I can't drink that. This water's got lots of mud in it, and it might have harmful bugs hiding in it too. We'd have to boil it before we could drink it. But you can make dirty water like this look much cleaner, even if you can't get all the bugs out. The way to get dirt out is to filter it. I'll show you an easy way to make a filter that works. First, I put a small hole in the bottom of a plastic container. That's about right. Then I put in a few scoops of coarse gravel. And about the same amount of sand. Then I put the container over the cup and pour in the water. I have to do this a few times. I'm getting there. The filter works because the dirt in the water gets stuck in the layers of sand and gravel. Each time the water goes through, more and more of the finer particles get trapped. Until... Clean as a whistle. The race to see who can eat the most cereal in one minute is in the home stretch. It's neck and neck. Blake's putting in a huge effort. <laughs> Marley's looking really relaxed. Aha! She's got a secret weapon. Water. We need lots of saliva to chew and digest food. That dry cereal absorbs all the saliva in our mouths. Without water, there's no way Blake can swallow. They're running out of time. Blake's struggling. <whistles> and the official result, Margo's the winner! Proving that boys might be greedier, but they're not always smarter. <laughs> again. But now she reckons she can show me how to cheat gravity. All I have to do is fill a bucket to about a quarter full and then spin it around. When the bucket swings in a circle, the force drives the water against the bottom so hard that it overcomes gravity, which would normally make it spill out. This is known as centrifugal force, the same force that keeps you in your seat on a roller coaster. I've got an idea. Let's try something. Your turn. I wonder if the water's going to stay in the bucket if we swing a bit slower. <laughs> I guess not. Now, tipping a bucket of water on her is no way to win a girl's heart. Oh, come on, Dana. I reckon hearts are made of stronger stuff than that. Look at this. 
Have a guess at what's the strongest part of your body. Your legs? Your arms? Maybe even your bottom? Nope, the strongest muscle in your body is one you can't even see, your heart. Here's an easy way to show just how strong it is. First, find your pulse. It's the throbbing you could feel in your wrist. Each throb is a beat made by your heart as it pumps blood around your body. You can count the beats. The average for a 10 year old is 80 beats a minute. About a cupful is pumped every time your heart beats. How about trying to do that 80 times a minute? You get tired pretty quickly. Just as well your heart doesn't give up so easily, it just keeps on doing that every minute of every day. In one day, it pumps a staggering 14,000 litres of blood around your body. That's this many bottles full, multiplied by a thousand. Amazing! Oh, what a day. My precious diary snapped by pesky Daniela. Her crazy cryptic map. Finally, my amazing court compass to the rescue. Now, let's get that diary back in safe hands. Daniela's map says, 10 paces north from the tree stump. According to my floating cork compass, north is over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then seven paces west. West there. Southwest. Northwest. And that should be the spot. The diary! She's found it! It's safe. Oh, thank goodness for that. Something's missing. The key! It's not here. Oh, that pest. <laughs> I'm sure we can make great rockets. The sky's the limit. Doesn't look too hard. Just need a few bits and pieces. Gotta make my rocket fly higher than him. I'm gonna leave her in my dust. Just takes a bottle. Maybe a lemon. And I think we have ourselves a space race. Real rockets can use two different kinds of fuel to take off. Liquid rockets burn highly refined petrol or hydrogen. Fuel in solid rockets can be as simple as a kind of gunpowder. But once you've lit them, you can't switch them off. So you better make sure you're pointed in the right direction. This rope puzzle is 250 years old. We've each got a rope tied between our wrists and then looped through each other. The puzzle is, how do we get free? I thought you said this was going to be fun. I can't believe I'm stuck here with you all day. This would be fun if you stopped squirming and started helping me solve this. Stop pulling. You stop. Well, that's certainly not going to work. What about if I step over and through and around? And, oh man, this is tougher than I thought. We're never going to solve this puzzle. I'm sure it seemed like a good idea at the time. We'll check back with those two later. But now an experiment that sounds fantastic. Oh, is that the dinner bell? No, not yet. I can fix that. I can make something that sounds just like a dinner bell. This is amazing. Bang the coat hanger gently. Not very impressive, huh? But now, watch this. 
tie strings to the corners, wrap them around your fingers, and put your fingers in your ears. Look stupid, but listen. It sounds just like Big Ben. Not bad, hey? It works because sound is carried by vibrating particles. When the vibration travels through the air, the particles are far apart and the sound isn't that loud. But the particles in a solid like string are packed close together. The vibration whizzes straight up to your ear and sounds much louder. Very clever. But now you're left for dinner. I'm going to make myself a little boat that sails without wind. Just cut out the shape from cardboard. Now the launch. See? No wind, no move. But watch what happens when I put a bit of detergent in the fuel tank. It will take a second or two. Off she goes! The soap coming off the back of the boat lowers the surface tension behind it. The tension in front of the boat stays the same, pulling the boat forward. Now that is a clever boat. Detergent powered boats, now there's an idea. And I wonder what Charmony and Blake have found to power their rockets. Charmony and I are making completely different rockets to win this space race. Man, I've got a beat off. I'm going for the more conventional look. This bottle will be my rocket. Now, I'll need some fins on the outside to keep it steady in the air. Cardboard is fine. Just stick them on with tape. Not bad. With my rocket, it'll be the cork that flies, not the bottle. Better dress it up a bit. And some foil, so it looks like a real rocket ship. Perfect. Scared yet? You will be once I get the power happening inside the bottle. I'm way ahead of her. I'm going to pour some power of compressed air. I've attached a foot pump to a cork with a small hole through the middle. Now, just jam the cork in the base and I'm ready to go. You'll be left in my space dust. <laughs> the chemical reaction in my bottle will blow my cork and Blake away. A little bit of lemon juice. A little bit of water. Mix them up. And the secret ingredient, baking powder. When I drop in a scoop of that, stand back. It should be time for liftoff. There's only one way to know whose design is best. It's off to the launch pad for a rocket ship showdown. <laughs> Watch this. Fingerprints. All over Mum's clean window. But I can see them better if I rub the tip of my finger in some pencil. I should be able to catch the impression on some tape. Just stick it to a white background. There it is. There are three basic fingerprint types. Arch, loop and whirl but everyone's different. I think mine is sort of a whirl. I'd be a great burglar with this tape. No fingerprints. But hey, weird. I couldn't pick up the money if I was a burglar. It just slips out. Your fingerprints are also known as friction ridges. They give your fingers better grip. I must have ridges in other places I need to grip, even on the soles of my feet, to stop me slipping. They don't stop the smell, though. Daniela is trying to find the strongest food in the kitchen. It's not spaghetti. 
grapes not even close. It's not biscuits either. Tato, you're kidding. Chocolate, no thanks. It's an egg. Hold one top to bottom and you just can't crush it. No matter how strong you are. The egg is tough to crack this way because it's able to spread the force equally around the whole shell. And even though it's thin, that shell is strong enough to withstand the pressure. Of course, there is another way. When you tap it on the side, the egg cracks easily because all the force is concentrated on one spot. Omelette, anyone? Everyone knows eggs can be brown or white, but what makes them that way? It's nothing to do with their quality or flavour. It's determined by the colour of the chicken that laid it. A brown or red chicken lays brown eggs. And you guessed it, a white chicken lays white eggs. Now these roach eggs are more about brains and brawn. We've got to think our way out. Well, we can't get the rope to pass through itself. So the only weak spot must be at the wrists. That's not it. Hmm, but I think we're on the right track. One of us has to get an arm out of this loop. So, if I slide this through, then you can wriggle your hand. And pull it through. We did it! We solved the puzzle! Well done! They're free! Now it's all systems go for takeoff in the backyard space race. Nothing can beat lemon power. Air pressure will rule the skies. You're going down! Nope, I'm going up. Way up. Got my mask to protect me from chemicals? Everything is ready for liftoff. T minus ten. In goes the baking soda. Nine. Start pumping in the air. Eight. Dam in the cork. Seven. The pressure's building up. Six. Give it a good shake. Five. It's getting close. Four. It's fizzing up. Three, two, one, zero. Lift off. I'm off first. Look at it go. Lemon fizz rules! Look how high I went! He'll never beat that! Uh oh, Houston, we might have a problem here! Come on, little rocket, you've got to win! Blast off! It's flying! How'd you like that one? I think we have our winner! By a galaxy! More like a centimetre. But that was great. I'm ready for another mission. The baking soda and the lemon juice react with each other. They produce lots of carbon dioxide gas. It builds up and builds up and builds up until... It blows the cork right out. Look out, NASA. Here I come. By pumping in more and more air, the pressure inside builds and builds until it blows the cork right out and the bottle heads for the stars. Well done, fellow astronaut. We're both stars. You know, I thought your lemon pal would be a real fizzle. <laughs> and I thought you were just a windbag. Hmm. I wonder if there's a prize for the first plastic bottle into orbit. Maybe the first pork on the moon. Well, it's time for us to blast off too. Thanks, Thanks for watching. We'll, we'll see you next time on Backyard Science. Backyard Science.